Hi everyone, I just made the same rookie mistake and let the memory fill up too much and got halfway through the video when it stopped. Okay, so I now have two of these to show you. Though these are a slightly different size of paper, I bought these pads um, at the works, whereas the, I've run out of those now on the second video. So I'm using these memo blocks and these are cheaper and easier to get a hold of anyway. Um, so what it is, is a box with a hardcover lid and I'm just, I made it this morning and thought, yeah, I love that. So I'm going to show you how to make it. Okay. You need one sheet of 30 by 5 centimetre square paper, which is 12 inch square paper. I'm using this latest one I picked up from the works called Jungle Dreams. Um, it's got loads of good patterns in. Um, and it's, as you can see, £3, 24 sheets, double sided. It's really good quality, heavy duty paper. Uh, and at this point in early October, it is a new range. So it might be there when you go or it might not, depending on when I upload the video. Okay, so from that one sheet of paper, you need to cut the outer cover, which will measure 24 by 13 centimetres. So that's that bit. You need two pieces to create the box. One measures 11.8 centimetres squared. And the base measures 11.5 centimetres squared. And those couple of millimetres do matter because it's the difference between the lid going on the box easily or not. Okay. And from this block, because this was a whole block, I have kind of carefully removed 1.5 centimetre block. So I'll get at least three out of here. Um, okay. And as I've run out of recycled chipboard now, um, that I used to take from the back of hardback envelopes and things. I'm using it to order some. So you'll need two pieces of chipboard. Doesn't matter if it's recycled or not. Um, so two pieces measuring 10 by 9.5 and a tip because it, it can be confusing because there isn't much difference in it. On the long side, mark the word top just to help you when you position it on the outer cover. And you'll need another little piece measuring 10 by 1.7, which is going to be the spine. OK, I think I've covered everything. Right. I'll try and leave everything in shot so you can see it while I work. But as I can't see what you can see, it's guessing. OK, so we're going to do the outer cover first. So we'll need the chipboard. Okay, right, so what we're going to do is, at this point it doesn't matter <coughs> which is which direction your paper is in because they're all, they're all, we can flip it once we get these bits stuck down. So what, I, what I'm aiming to do is to get these in the middle of here with a good border all the way around. Normally I don't leave this much border. But I'm not lining these chipboards. The box is going to do the lining. And because there's a lip all the way around the box, we need the paper to cover over that lip. So we'll need this. And it's about a 1.5 centimetre gap all the way around, uh, lip all the way around. Um, OK, so. Glue on the chipboard. It's quite a quick project. So I'm hoping to get it in before Asda knocks at the back door with my grocery deliveries and disrupts me. OK, so I'll position it on the paper first just to give myself an idea where they're going to go so that when I do put glue on them, I can put them back where I picked them up from and get a good position on them. Right, with the spine... You need to leave about a, a millimeter and a half between there and the sides, top and bottom, whatever, whichever way you look at it. Okay, so about a mil and a half is all you need. Okay. 
put plenty of glue on because the chipboard does tend to absorb the glue particularly around the edges but we are going to spread it out so okay so see why that helps because there's only five centimeters in it uh, five millimeters difference between the top and the sides there we go right so i've got one of these icing tool things um that i use for clay but i've discovered it's great for this so i'm trying to hold it still while i spread the glue out behind here just so it'll dry a little bit quicker and it'll be nice and evenly spread When I'm fairly confident that it won't move, I'm going to flip it over and do it from the paper side. Okay, right. So then we're going to bend the paper around the chipboard just to give us a start. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just gives us a start because this paper is quite heavy. Okay, right. so we know where our corners are going to be. With a pair of scissors, crop your corners to about a millimetre, millimetre and a half from the actual corner of the chipboard. But a tip I'll pass on that I've been passed on in most of my videos is if you're not that confident of doing this, keep the corners and stick them down there onto the corners of your chipboard. Because then if you're slightly off with your cutting, that paper is going to hide any chipboard. OK, I just never remember to do it. So cut away your corners. There's more to cut away than usual because the borders, the edge of the paper is wider. Okay, now don't be sparing with your glue here. What I tend to do is put a bead, like a, a little line of glue, all the way around the chipboard. So that the paper's got something to stick to along the depth of the chipboard. And it also gives you a nice sort of hardback book edge. I'll show you what I mean by that in just one second. So it gives you that nice sort of depth on the edge. Okay, so once you've got the glue on there, it's messy. I'm not going to kid you. You need lots of glue because the chipboard absorbs it. So be generous. And just put your glue on all sides. It will spread out, so if you've missed a little bit here and there, don't worry about it, because we're going to spread it out. Last edge. Okay, now with your bone folder or cake icing tool in my case, Bring the paper up to the side of the chipboard, okay, and give it a nice score up there, okay. And that will help define that crease along the edge of your chipboard. Then, while you've still got your bone folder, roll it over. The long edges are the, the hardest ones, so I tend to start with those. What I'm trying to do is make sure my paper is wrapped nice and tightly around that edge and then I'll go in and spread the glue out from behind. Just move any glue that's in the way, it's going to be covered. I will tell you though, you do have to wash your bone folder or ice spreading tool afterwards because it's covered in glue. Right, there's one side, sorry. Up there. So 
So as you can see, the glue does come out, but it's not a problem. Just spread it around or wipe it away with your finger for now. I'm going to just go back down that edge again, make sure that's nice and tight. The edges are easy because you literally can just clip it like that. nice tight book binding what I'm going to do now will just make it easier when we go to close it I'm just running the bone folder the edge of it down either side of that spine to crease the paper in there and it just makes it so much easier to um, fold it when we need to okay that bit done right on your on both score in your 1.5 borders I've already done that. Fold and burnish them. Right way in. One. At this point it's up to you which side of the paper you want. You can either have it match on the outside or you can flip your paper over and have it on the other way. But you only the only part of this that you're going to see are these edges. Okay, I just prefer it the same. Okay, so we're not wedging both sides here. We're just going to wedge one. So cut in up to the first border, first score line and wedge on the inside of your glue and tab. I'm not going to do the outside like we normally do. And as you can see, I'm only taking a tiny little section away. Must need a coffee. Feeling a bit caffeine deprived. I'll go do that as soon as I finish with this because it doesn't take long this which is another reason I really enjoyed coming up with it I like projects that you can put together quick and I need three things for tomorrow anyway to go to the dentist one for the receptionist Debbie and then one for Roxy my dentist and the technician that's working with her okay I'm going to glue all my tabs at the same time Top and bottom. So the video stopping halfway through the last one is probably a good thing because it means I had to make a third one of these so I could can take these tomorrow as little gifts. Right. Now try and get your corners as nice and square as you can because it helps the lid slip down onto the box if you've got nice square corners. Okay. And that's why I told you not to cut away the wedge from the outside. It helps you line up the corners when the boxes are this small. You know, like as in depth when they're this shallow oh the sun's just come out nice one okay it's one part Sorry, I don't carry on rather than on. I'm so used to being on my own and crafting on my own, I forget to talk. Sorry. <laughs> right. So, that's 
the lid. So I'll drop your block of paper into the bottom one. It's a tight fit, but it's meant to be. Try not to get glue off your fingers all over it. There we go. Then it doesn't really matter because that bit and that bit are going to be stuck to the inside. This bit matters. Close your book and decide which way up the paper goes. Mine goes in that direction, so I want the top of the box stuck to here. Okay, so I've got it in the right direction. All I'm going to do is flip the box over, spread glue on the bottom, try not to get it down the gap or your box won't open. And if you do get it down there, just wipe it away. Again, plenty of glue because the chipboard absorbs it. Then we simply stand it in the middle with the edge all around and close it. Then you can see what you're doing with it. Okay, you can tuck it down right into the spine from here and you can level it out at either side so there's a nice even border on either side. Okay. Then you can flip it over and spread the glue on the base of the box. Okay, that's the box, the base done. Now the top of the box. With it in position, put some glue just on the spine part. Oh, you know, the where the box is going to stick to the spine. Because we need to glue this down before we glue the top down. And again, just close it, press it onto the chipboard. Probably put too much glue on this because I need to open it without moving it. Oh, good. And burnish the glue down with my bone folder just so I know it's not going to move in there. Okay. So as you see, the box closes as you close the book. Okay, so the last part is glue on the top of your lid. The back is pulling away, but once I get this glue on, we can stick it properly. And again, generous with the glue because the chipboard's going to absorb it. Then simply press everything in place and close your box. I always tend to do this, I tap it down so that the box is going to drop into the spine of the chipboard. Okay, that's the only reason I'm doing that. Then back over with your bone folder. And I'll carefully open it to show you. There we go. So there's your little box that closes by it, you know, closes straight over and is like a little book. Okie okay, cookie. Okay. Have fun.